Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem number of subarrays of size K and average greater than or equal to threshold. Now, I don't know about you, but as soon as I read the name of the problem, subarrays of size K, that immediately tells me that this might be a sliding window problem because that is an efficient way to get subarrays for larger arrays. And in this case, another hint is that we want the average of those subarrays and a sliding window is a good way to not recalculate the entire subarray. But we're given an array of integers and two integers K and threshold. Now K is going to be the size of our subarray. So that's gonna be the size of our window. And the threshold is going to be the threshold value that our subarray needs to meet. More specifically, the average value of our subarray needs to be greater than or equal to the threshold. If it is, we can increment our result. We can count that towards our result because what we're trying to return is the number of these subarrays that meet this condition. So I think I pretty much dissected the problem already, but let's go through an example quickly. So given this subarray and given a window size of three and a threshold, which I'm just gonna call T, four, we want our average to be greater than or equal to four, but our subarray has to be exactly of size three. It can't be smaller, because think about it, one value like this, five alone, does meet the threshold, but that's not what we're looking for. We want the subarrays exactly of size three, not smaller than three. So starting at the beginning, we could do it like this, where we just have one value so far, but we want to keep growing this window until it's of size K. We have two values. And while we do this, we're gonna keep track of the average. How do you calculate an average? Well, remember two plus two divided by the length of the subarray, which is four divided by two, the average is two. That's kind of obvious from just looking at this. And when you add a third value, well, all of these are twos, so the average is still gonna be two. But now our window is a valid length. So an average of two does not meet the threshold. Okay, now we want to check the next window. We're gonna increase it by one, just like we've been doing, but now our window is too large. So before we even compare the average of this window to our threshold, we have to remove a value over here. And then we're looking at this window. Well, the average is still two, that's too small. And once again, remove this value and add this value. So now we're getting more interesting. Our sum, our total sum so far is nine. This is kind of another hint that we should be keeping track of the current sum of our window because then we can easily calculate the average just by dividing by K every single time. So the average right now is three. That's still too small. Remove this guy. Now we have three values here, a total of 12 divided by three is yes, greater than or equal to the threshold four. So we increment our result by one. Our result now is going to be equal to one. Remove this guy, check this window. Our sum now is 15. By the way, previously our sum was 12. So how would I update it? I wouldn't just go through the entire subarray and sum every single value together. What we would do is since we removed a two over here, we're gonna subtract two from this, which is gonna give us 10. And then we're gonna add the next value, which is a five, which is gonna give us the 15. So we can update the current sum in constant time. That's just another supporting fact that the overall time complexity of this sliding window is gonna be big O of N. Now, our total count of windows that meet the threshold is two now. And I'm just gonna do this quickly. We're gonna get rid of this guy, add this eight. So now our sum is gonna be 18 divided by three. Our average is definitely gonna be greater than four. So now finally our total is gonna be three. That's what we would return. You can see that's what they had over here as well. So the problem is a pretty cookie cutter. This is a pretty good example of the sliding window technique. We don't have any data structures. We don't have any hash sets. So in this case, the memory complexity is constant. So now let's code it up. I'm gonna start just by initializing the result. I'm gonna set it to zero. Now, there are many, many ways that we could code up this sliding window. We could have two pointers left and right, but I'm gonna code this up like the cleanest way that I know how to do it, which is just by using one pointer because if we have our left pointer and we go through the positions, we can get the right pointer pretty easily just by adding K and subtracting one to it. 
that will give us a window of size K every single time. And we're gonna start at the beginning and we don't need to go all the way up until the end because we only want windows of exactly size K. If we go all the way to the end, we might get windows that are too small. So we're gonna have our left pointer go through every position in the array minus K plus one. This makes sure that we go through every single valid position. The reason I'm plusing one here is because in Python, this value is non-inclusive. So we need the plus one to make sure that we actually get to this length minus K index. Remember though, we also need to keep track of our current sum. Now a shortcut I'm gonna do is just sum the first K minus one values so that we don't have to do that here. And because we're not even iterating through every position anyway, here I'm gonna say the array up until K minus one, I'm going to sum the array. Remember this is non-inclusive, so we won't include the K minus one value here. Now, when we have our left pointer going through the array, we're going to add to the current sum, the value at the array, but we're not gonna add the value at the left pointer because we've already added those values up here. We want to add the value at the right pointer. How do we get the right pointer? How do we calculate it? Well, we take left plus K minus one. And then we wanna check, is our average, how do we calculate that? Take the current sum, divide by K. Is the average greater than or equal to the threshold? It's important that we have that greater than or equal. If it is, then we increment our result. And then remember, as we pop the leftmost value, we don't really have to update our left pointer because we're already doing that up above in the for loop. But what we do have to do is take our current sum and subtract from it the value at the leftmost index. If this is confusing to you, I definitely recommend trying to code it up in a simpler way. Like you don't get any brownie points for making your code as short as possible, usually in interviews. I just wanted to show you this way. The main shortcut I'm taking is just by initializing our window immediately and not having to iterate through every position in the array. Sometimes this technique can be helpful for more difficult problems, but once we're done with that, we go ahead and return the result. Now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If this was helpful, please like, and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.